Item number SCP-517 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-517 is to be kept secure within Containment Locker 51164 and Site-66, facing away from the doorway. A thick sheet is to be draped over the item at all times. Testing is currently prohibited, as the nature of the manifestation invariably causes a low-level containment breach. If SCP-517-01 is triggered, personnel are instructed to report to their immediate superior to enact Protocol 517-001. As of Incident 517-1997-M, SCP-517 is to be kept in a dedicated cell at all times. An opaque black sheet is to be kept bound around the object at all times. As of 2002, no more testing is to be conducted on SCP-517 without Site Director's approval. Description: SCP-517 is a fortune-telling machine. Item stands approximately 2 meters tall, containing a mechanical puppet and an electric candle within a glass and wooden case. Examination has shown an internal layout consistent with similar machines. On the top panels the words Grandmother Predictions are painted on built-in signage. The puppet within is in the shape of an elderly woman, with a white blouse and a blue shawl. Item's power cord has been severed approximately 15 cm from its base. It appears to have been expertly separated from its original power source. No reaction occurs if a coin is inserted into the slot. The item will energize automatically once an hour if an individual hereafter the target enter its field of vision. The puppet will turn to face directly at the target, dispense a fortune card from the slot on its front, and cease function. Process is fully mechanical, and item does not show sign of awareness. See addendum for a transcript of examples of fortunes. The individual who activated SCP-517 will become the target of an entity or number of entities who will attack at 1.43 am local time the following morning. The entity or entities, hereby SCP-517-01, appear the varying number of long, multi-jointed arms, between ten and three dozen, initially appearing from a single area. Arms seem to be completely corporeal, and can apparently extend indefinitely. Entity will immediately rush towards and attempt to grab and capture the target or targets. If the hunt is made sufficiently challenging, additional arms will begin to constantly generate in close proximity to the victim in order to facilitate an easier capture. Chosen areas are usually low, cramped, dark areas, such as basements or closets, and will not shift during a given assault. In all instances, targets have been captured, rapidly dragged into SCP-517-01's chosen area, and savagely beaten until sunrise. Entity has been documented reaching from the ventilation system of the office building, drawing a target into a drop ceiling, pulling a target under a bed, and drawing a target through a sewage grate. Any attempts to intrude on this event will result in human aggressors being drawn into the assault. The remains of victims are reduced to… To date, there have been no survivors. If more than one individual activates the item in the span of one day, all will become targets of the following night's assault. SCP-517-01 will appear from multiple areas while hunting multiple targets. However, due to the resulting chaos during the test, 517-34C, in which this was discovered, all measures are to be taken to avoid multiple activations. Remote viewing of the expected points of origin of SCP-517-01 during testing revealed arms extending from points around corners and otherwise off-camera, eventually crowding out the video feed. Fragmented, unidentified human DNA has appeared in the areas utilized by SCP-517-01. Ultimate origins are still currently unknown. Addendum Fortunes Sample from several fortunes as read by SCP-517 1993 How many times should somebody be told to be good? 1994 Your mother raised you better than that. I'm sorry, but fair is fair. 1994 You try to be good, you should try harder. 1994 Some people don't know how to be kind. You'll know soon enough, won't you? 1997 People who do terrible things deserve terrible things. You've brought this upon yourself, my dear. 1998 You'll find out, soon enough. 2002 You look like you've made some mistakes. Some things are unforgivable, aren't they? 
2002. Do you think they've forgotten? Incident 517-1997-M SCP involved, SCP-517 Personnel involved, Dr. Augusta Mail Deceased, Site-23 Security Date, August 25, 1997 Location, Storage Site-23 On August 25, 1997, at approximately 1356, the late Dr. Mail was targeted by SCP-517 while supervising the object's transport to a new storage locker. Security and Site Director were alerted, and a defensive strategy was devised. At 23.30, Dr. Mail was loaded into a Foundation UH-60 Blackhawk, five security personnel assigned as bodyguards. Helicopter was situated on Helipad 3-8, located on the roof of the then-empty Cafeteria 1. Non-essential security personnel from Sectors 1, 3, and 4 were armed with blades and stun batons, and select personnel were granted flame weapons and concussion explosives. Squads were directed to strategic points around Cafeteria 1's main and second floors, and instructed to destroy any instances of SCP-517-01 that appear. As this was the first concerted effort intended to overcome SCP-517-01, all measures were taken. As Cafeteria-1 was not constructed with a proper basement, it was expected that SCP-517-01 would manifest in one of the surrounding buildings. All SCP objects that posed a threat if released by SCP-517-01 were moved to another area of the site. SCP-059's enclosure is located away from Cafeteria-1 and as such was deemed safe. Log of Events 2357 Dr. Mail and Guards Board Aerial Transport 0005 Nighttime illumination augmented by additional floodlights 0036 Ground squads assigned to Interior Cafeteria 1 in place 0041 Ground squads assigned to Exterior Cafeteria 1 in place 103 Weapon check called 110 Dr. Mail expresses an intense feeling of suspense becomes mildly agitated, attributed to knowledge of SCP object and subsequent paranoia. 120. Last call for restroom breaks. 130. Site locked down. All doors and windows capable of being sealed or locked. 143. Approximately 18 SCP-517-01 limbs sighted to the east of Cafeteria 1, generated somewhere in Storage Center 4B, approximately 40 meters away immediately destroyed by concentrated weapons fire. 147. More SCP-517-01 sighted in the same area. Additional arms generate to replace those destroyed by weapons fire. Several seem tasked to collect pieces left behind. No hostility towards squads reported. 155. Further instances of SCP-517-01 sighted to the northeast of Cafeteria 1 generating from within several Foundation-assigned vehicles parked between Cafeteria 1 and Storage Center 4B. Ground Squad engages, utilizing flame weapons. 2.10 Assault continues upon SCP-517-01. Number of arms greatly increase. Between 80 and 100 are estimated to generate at a steady pace from various points to the northeast. Fire damaged or destroyed limbs retract out of sight. Pieces left behind collected by Entity. No hostility reported directly towards Foundation teams. 224. Squads report some difficulty keeping up with the rate of replacement. Explosive weapons authorized against origin points. No hostility reported directly towards Foundation teams. 239. Dr. Mail and Aerial Squad go airborne. 241. Arms generate from the walls within Cafeteria 1, ground floor. Later examination reveals that arms have formed irregular holes in the drywall consistent with blunt force. Ground floor squad engages, utilizing close quarters weaponry. No hostility reported directly towards Foundation teams. 249. SCP-517-01 appears within Cafeteria-1 ventilation system. Roof squad engages. Ground-based instances of SCP-517-01 are noted to continue reaching in the direction of Cafeteria-1 even while Dr. Mail has gone airborne within the evacuation vehicle. 200 estimated to have appeared. 304. SCP-517-01 appear on roof of Cafeteria-1, generating from kitchen exhaust ports. Damage done to structural mesh. Entity engaged. 311. 
SCP-517-01 observed to remove the locked fire escape door on the north side of Cafeteria-1. Said instance is generated within Cafeteria-1's ventilation system. 3.22 Four SCP-517-01 limbs, generating from the exhaust system of Cafeteria-1, reach helicopter. Roof crew alerted. Limbs cold. 3.31 Dr. Mail becomes hysteric. Demands that the pilot flee. Helicopter begins moving to the southeast. 3.33 SCP-517-01 generated upon helicopter, seemingly from the base of the tail, began attacking the doors. 3.34 Left side rear window shattered. Onboard squad engaged with bladed weapons. 3.35 Dr. Mail acquired by SCP-517-01, drawn through window, passed towards waiting arms, subsequently moved through the air towards Cafeteria-1. 3.35 SCP-517-01 limb caught in helicopter's tail rotor. Pilot forced to attempt an emergency landing. Agent Track severely wounded. 3.36 Squad report a marked increase in hostility by SCP-517-01. Entity begins replacing arms at a greatly increased rate. Number of limbs estimated at a steady 150. 3.37 Dr. Mail drawn through Cafeteria 1's kitchen ventilation system. 337. Dr. Mail reappears in kitchen. Agent Matheson attempts to sever 517-01 limbs, subsequently captured and pulled towards fire exit with Dr. Mail. 337. Agent Germain, Agent Teffler, and Agent Sale are captured. Defense squads ordered to stand down. 339. Dr. Mail, Agents Matheson, Germain, Teffler, and Sale drawn into storage building 4B through access door. Outside limbs retract, disappear. 344. Agent Ted attempts to damage storage building 4B with combat grenades, aggressively drawn into building by exceedingly rapid limbs. 345. Command contacted. Mission failed. 701. Dawn. 710. Collective remains of Dr. Mail and Agents Matheson, Germain, Teffler, Sale, and Ted to rediscovered.